G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So today, Jack's back. Yep. He's been working, he's been playing soccer, and you're working again this afternoon. Yep. So we're gonna try and get this smashed out before I have to take you to work. So part three of uh, our full knuckle rebuild and brake assembly. So you saw where we got up to last time. If you didn't, make sure you go back and check that out. So again, thanks to online auto parts and chem tools, we are able to move forward with this and get this all built up. So today we're doing our brakes. So we've got all new wheel cylinders, all new brakes. I've already ripped them all apart and cleaned them up. It's not difficult to pull them apart, it's just basically eight bolts and a couple springs. The brake assembly is a little bit different. Two wheel cylinders per each side, and we actually have a left and a right. So we don't want to get them mixed up, okay? So when you're pulling them apart, make sure that you take note that you've got left and you've got right. So here's our old wheel cylinders. It actually has stamped on it left or L and R for right. And I love how everything on the old stuff has the old Toyota logo. It's cool. It is cool. It's on everything. I love it. It's fantastic. Right, eh? So the first thing we're going to do is unpack from online auto parts. You just saw, just saw the old ones. They weren't truly covered in spider webs. All the rubbers are all gone on it. There's a couple of them are seized. Now you can buy rebuild kits for these and can do that, but. For the sake of doing that, when you can get one that looks like that from online auto parts, what would you choose? That one, obviously. Yeah, it looks good. It is ready to go straight out of the box, straight onto the backing plate. Right, a couple things. The backing plate, we have this little indent at the bottom here. That is, well, now I've just given it away. This little indent is the bottom. Make sure you have that at the bottom, not at the top. And the reason for that is, when we put all our hub and stuff together, there's a drain there, so that'll drain away any water that gets up in there and helps it clean. First thing we need to do is get the orientation of our new wheel cylinders right. And the easiest way of doing that is you've got this little retainer clip here. So every time this turns, it opens up the wheel cylinders and it pushes on the brakes. So we have one facing up, one facing down. Have our little retainer clips facing on the outside. Now Jack, I'll get you to bolt them up. So another telltale sign to make sure you got it the right way is, is this is where your brake line goes into. It should be facing on the inside part here. If it's facing on the back side, you've got it the wrong way. Oh, look what's in the background, Jack. Yes. Let's put the brake line back on, Jack. Right, okay, so now we've got the wheel cylinders in. Now we need the uh, brake shoes. Alrighty. Brand new brake shoes. Rip them out. Yeah. Jack hasn't done this before, but I've had shown him how to do it, so he's going to give it a go. So Jack's going to put in the brake shoes and the springs onto the wheel cylinders. Right, so how are we going to do it, mate? So first of all, you have a skinnier side and a fatter side. So you get the fatter side and you get the shiny side. That's how I like to remember it. The fat side and the shiny side. Exactly. Let's have a look. Show us what the shiny side is, mate. So this is the shiny side right there. It's okay, so we've got the than... adjuster nut. That is one the, is the shiny side as Jack calls it. Yep. 
Then you're gonna see these two holes here. You're gonna get some springs. Put it in one side. Just lay it there for now. Get the other one, put it in the other side. Oops. Now comes the tricky part. So what are you gonna do here, mate? Um, I'm gonna start by putting the springs in. Good idea. Like that. Excellent. Now the springs are attached. You just start with one side. What side do you reckon? This one? Whatever side you think is gonna be easier, mate. Pop it, pop it into the actual thing before you move to the next one. You go to this one. Next. This is the tricky part. You just gotta push that and it just clips in. Done. Here we are. You made it look easy, Jack. First time, well done. Awesome. All right, so Jack's just finished rebuilding the brakes. Sensational job. So that's ready to go in. Now what we need to do is put our ball and our claw, pack that whole knuckle full of grease, and then we can start putting all the assembly back. So our chem tools, Molytac grease, same as what we used earlier, uh, packing all the bearings and that. We're going to pack this about three quarters full. We're going to put a fair bit of grease in there because we really want that to uh, be well lubricated. So this stuff is a high grade premium Molytac grease from Chemtools. It's going to reduce our friction, reduce the wear, and hopefully make everything last a bit longer. So a little bit better than your general purpose grease, especially when we're running a ball and a claw setup. So there's a bit more friction involved in that setup. So, oh no, I've got, oh no, I've teared my glove. Let's get a big handful of grease, and we're just jamming it into our knuckle. Put it right in there. Push it all the way in. Now when I pulled this apart, Jack, mm -hmm. there was very little grease in there. I'm not sure why, but that's how it was when I pulled it all apart. Okay, we'll get our ball. There we go. Get our claw. Again, we'll run grease all around the mating surfaces so they're already all prepped up. There we go. So that's all prepped up, ready to go. Now what we're going to do next is just clean that surface off a little bit where the gasket's got to go. Now we've got our spindle hub. We have a drain point at the bottom, so make sure that drain point is at the bottom. Put our gasket on. I'm going to slide that over our shaft. Oops. Carefully make sure that gasket doesn't get pinched. Keep that on there. Yeah, there line that gasket holes up. Soft blow, dead blow hammer. Just be careful when you put it on. That's it. Gasket and oil seal. Oh, hold it on, that's it. Is that on? We've got our bolts into our retaining flange and we're going to torque these up to 15 foot pound. So I've set the torque wrench to 15 foot pound, so it's not much, it's only a small amount of torque setting. You felt that click? Yep. yep. And then we're going to put a retaining wire to hold it all in place. I just get a bit of wire, so this is just 1.25 tie wire. We're threading this wire. We're holding those bolts. 
and thread that wire through every single one and it's a little bit tricky so just work your wire all the way around this will stop the nuts coming undone in its service time Right, wheel hub, wheel bearings. Again, online auto parts have helped us out here. So all new bearings and seal. I've pre-packed the bearings with grease. Now if you didn't see how to do that, jump back to the last episode and you'll see how to pack the bearings. We use the Chem Tools Molly Tack grease. We've pre-packed them and we put them back in their bag so they wouldn't get any dirt or sand or anything inside them. Okay, get the bearing, we get the outer race. Outer race, make sure that you put the outer race in the right way, Jack. Because what will happen if we put it in the wrong way? You can never get it out. Well, we can get it out, but we could damage it. And then our new bearing is not so new anymore. All right, so again, you saw probably in the first part one, We've got our old outer race bearings. We just got an angle grinder, we cut a slit straight down it. And we can use this to help install the new race. So I just sit that on top. Nylon block. I've got a copper hammer or your dead blow hammer. Just tap it in. hear it when it gets home, but you can see it's at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. All right, just in there. There we go, see? Awesome. Right, now we won't put that bearing in yet, mm -hmm. because we want to turn that over, and we want to put the other side in. That's cool. the taper, so you want the taper facing up. Okay. Yep, drop that in. Nice and even, as even as you can get it, because that's important. Okay, get your block a nylon block, sit that on top and just give it some light small little taps. Stop. Now you can see it's gone in further here, so tap over this side nice and softly. Is it home? Feels like it. Let's have a look. Can you see it seated on the bottom? Yep. Excellent job. Awesome. It's pre packed. Drop it in place. Yep, that's it, just sits in, mate. Now grab your seal, open that up. Okay, now that's a dust seal or oil seal. Make sure nothing's in there. Lip seal. That one? Yep, sit it on top. Now we want to tap that in as carefully and as evenly as we can. This is quite thin and mm -hmm. we don't want to damage that or crush that. So actually you can try and push it in with your hand a bit, nice and firm. All right, so just tap that in, Jack. Yep. All right, Jack, so grab your hub. We've got all the bearings on there. Keep going, you'll sort of feel it seat in. Oh. Spin it right round if you want. Slide that on. This one? Yep. Push it all the way on. 
Alrighty. Righto. So, from online auto parts, open up this box and we'll see what's inside. Right. So, what have we got? A retaining washer, locking washer, and two nuts. Alright, open her up. It's like a lolly bag, mate. You desperately want to get in, but you can't. Right, eight. So the retaining wash is the first one that goes on. That's the one with the little tab on the top. Okay, so slide that on. Just like that. Yep, and get one of the nuts. You got, you got two nuts there, Jack. <laughs> Right now, so now we're setting the uh, the preload on the bearings. So what we want to do is actually want to tighten up this first nut, pretty tight, pretty firm. Normally, you just have a nice big socket like this, but this one's too big. This is for your newer Le Cruises. This is 50 mil. So if you've got a 50 mil big deep socket, you're a winner. Now I don't have one, so I'm just going to use some adjustable jaws here, and we're going to do it up nice and tight. What a lot of people do. And don't do this. People get a pin punch, they sit on there and they tap it in to do it up tight. Don't do that because what will happen is you could just flare off a tiny bit of metal and that little shaving of metal will get in your bearings and then you destroyed your brand new bearings and it just looks ugly too. So we're going to tighten that up nice and tight. Every time you do it up, spin it right around, and then you get a bit more out of it. Okay, so now those bearings are crushed in nice and tight, but we don't want that because that'll make the bearings fail. So now we need to back that nut off. Just quarter of a turn, like that, and you actually feel that turn. So slide on the locking tab, and screw your other nut on. Okay, so screw it up just so it just touches. Okay, now what I want you to do is get a pin punch. Mm -hmm. and a hammer and we're going to fold that tab over the back so this is a locking tab to stop that coming undone just give it nice little taps you see it fold over move right along it keep going keep That's going. Good or... yep you want it folded right over tighten up your lock nut as tight as you can go Right, so now fold one of those locking tabs back the opposite way. That's it. No, that's yeah. perfect. Well done. It's all locked on place. Nice. Excellent, well done. So as we all know, there's nothing better than receiving boxes in the mail, ripping them open and finding all your new car parts in it. So as you know, online auto parts have jumped on. They've helped me out with a whole lot of bits and pieces. But something really cool that online auto parts are offering to everyone, including you guys, a Super Saver member. How good is it when you get good quality car parts? But how much better is it if you can get a discount? With online auto parts, you can be a Super Saver member. All you got to do is jump onto their webpage, link below, sign up using your email, Facebook or Google account, tick the box to subscribe to the newsletter, that's it! Not only good quality car parts, but discounts coming straight your way, as easy as that. Anyway, let's get straight back into the build. Righto, so the FJ40 build, you saw me do a worn hub rebuild. This one still has a worn freewheeling hub, but it's a bit different. Now. 
it looked like this. After a bit of cleanup, it looks like this. How cool is that? It looks sensational. Stripped it all down and using the ChemTools part washer solvent, we cleaned up all the parts. They came up mint. Then after a scrubbing in the parts cleaner, we hit it with one of these buffer wheel discs from Toolking. It came up absolute mint. You can see it's shiny as. After we had it all polished up, the next thing I did was I jumped into the wife's makeup box and I stole some of the nail polish. Sometimes the simple things like nail polish really tidy things up. There's not much to these freewheeling hubs. Because we stripped down the parts cleaner, not only has it cleaned out all the dirt, sand, and all the other rubbish that was inside it, but it's also washed out and cleaned out all the grease. So we need to repack the bearing inside here and put grease. So if you happen to have a freewheeling hub that looks pretty much like this one, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Be very careful, it's got a needle bearing in it. If you're not careful, your little needles are gonna go everywhere and you're gonna lose them, and then you're gonna go to panic mode. So I'll show you how to pull this down, throw it back on the car, and then the whole front is finished. Pretty exciting. Grab yourself a clean rag, cloth, anything you want. Make sure you chuck it down on your table. Put your hub on it before you start building it because you want to make sure that you capture everything that comes out of it. You don't want to lose any of those needle bearings we're talking about. And on the back here, we've got a little circlip. I'm just going to pop that open, slide it out, and you'll see what we're talking about. Circlip here, circlip pliers, just put your fingers over it because if you don't that could pop up and you might lose your circlip we want to keep that now all we're going to do is just slide that off very carefully and i'm going to show you right so there they are there's all the little needles and you can see some have already already fallen out this is why it's very important to have a sheet down so we capture them all we want to get all those little needles out or bearings out Pop them all out. Righto, so there they are there. So it's important we don't lose any of them because we'll be in trouble. Because this is all super clean, if we were to throw this straight back in the car, what's going to happen is we've got no grease in here and the friction between your little bearing is going to build up heat and it's not going to last long at all and it's going to damage it. So all we're going to do is clean out this groove Fill it up with some uh, Molly Tac grease from ChemTools. Then we just place each one of these little rollers in one at a time, put it all back together, and we're done. Get our Molly Tac grease from ChemTools. Don't need much, just a bit on your finger. You can wear gloves if you like, but you don't need much at all for this. And then all we're going to do is just rub that grease all the way around. The great thing about this ChemTools MoliTac grease, it's a, high, it's a high grade wear and it reduces the friction. So it's gonna stop that build up of heat and friction as this bearing spins around. And then it's as simple as just getting some small little pliers, picking up one at a time and placing it in. Take your time, there's no rush. Right, so we're done. So the grease will actually hold those rollers in. It's not going to go anywhere now, which is really good. Rub some grease around here. That's our mating surface. All we're going to do now is just carefully slide that in, turn it over. That way you can make sure that there's no rollers are going to pop out. Now obviously if you notice that rollers are damaged or pitted, then you're going to have to replace that needle bearing. Circlip back in place. Make sure it clicks in place. That's it. Now all I'm going to do is just pack some grease into here. That's it, we're done. Now we can put it all together, chuck it back on the car. All right, with some new bolts. I'm just actually using 
these like star washers. I'm not using spring washers. So only an aluminium housing and a spring washer will just tear this to bits. So that'll sit in there just nicely like that. Righto, so on the back of this, I've just smeared a light film of gasket sealant. Not too much, because you don't want it to squeeze out and make a mess. But sit that on top. Just like that. Take the gasket we do have, brand new from online auto parts. That'll sit on the back just like that. Right on, now for the rewarding part. Make sure all your surfaces are clean. You've got two locating dowels. Sit our gasket over. Line our dowels and our holes up. New bolt. Now, as always, just do opposite bolts. Just doing them up snug to start with. Clean rag will just wipe off any of that sealant. It just might be squeezing through to make it look neater. Jack's just putting the brake drum on, lining up the two locating support holes. This is a yep M10 by 1.25. So we did just uh, clean it out with a tap to start with, M10 1.25. Looks are. sensational, Jack. Throw the tyres on and we've got a roller again. Awesome. Right, hey, so we're nearly up to another rolling chassis. All we've got to do is throw the two front tyres on and we're done again. But just like last time, Jack, how long is it going to be rolling for? Not very long. Why is that? Taking the back tyres off next. So the back tyres will be coming off next. Do bearings, brakes. Again, we'll check all the assembly in the back to make sure it's all okay. And um, yeah, before we can give this its uh, ticket health to be a proper roller again. So again, guys, big thanks to Chem Tools, Online Auto Parts and Talking. And most of all, a huge thanks to you guys. You guys have been awesome in supporting us. And uh, we love getting your comments. We love getting your emails. Jump onto our Instagram page, there's some little flicks that come up there every now and then, so we really appreciate your support, don't we mate? Yep. Can't do without them. Yes, absolutely. Well, we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for you guys, so thank you so much guys. Look, if you want to keep following what's going on with this build, or you want to support us, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, feel free to leave a comment. We love hearing feedback from you guys. Uh, it's been awesome. Until next time, when we start stripping the rest off. Thanks for watching.